After winning only four games in his first season of 52-53, head coach Bob Curran pulled off a quick turnaround, finishing with a program record 13 victories the next year. Forward Dick Ede was named All-Yankee Conference. The next year, Ede was joined by Coast Guard transfer George Trigger Burke, another All-Yankee Conference performer, to form a formidable group. Trigger Burke was positively outstanding. Uh, jump shots also was so strong. Six feet tall, 205 pounds of rock, solid rock. He would drive into the basket towards the basket and get ready for a layup and he would cradle the ball right here waiting for somebody to hit him waiting for contact he was so strong and smart about that that it was very he was very successful and I had the privilege of playing with George Burke uh, who's well known up here George Trigger Burke uh, I was his caddy I handed the ball off to him before the start of the 55-56 season, the NCAA announced that the Yankee Conference champion would earn an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. With all the experienced talent on the UMass squad, there was hope that the Red Men could become that year's conference representative. It was a great season for us because we had veteran players, Trigger Burke, Jack Foley, Paul Aho, uh, Dick Ede. Um, we had veteran players, we could play defense, we could play offense. Uh, we had the prospects going into the season of being a very good team and uh, it did not disappoint. Going into the final week of the season, UMass had only one loss in the Yankee Conference while UConn was undefeated in league play as the rivals prepared to meet at the cage. UMass knew it had to win the game to keep its hopes of an NCAA tournament berth alive. There was that possibility. Yeah, we knew that possibility existed, that if we uh, beat them, we, we might go to the NCAA. UConn was a national power every year, and you, we focused in those days on trying to beat UConn. It was a, a daunting task to play them any day, but we played them very well. It was a tough game, close all the way. So close, in fact, that the game was knotted at 85 in the final minutes. So the coach called a timeout and I was the point guard and I was to food, feed Jackie Foley. And so when I went to give him the ball, of course, everyone on Connecticut knew he was going to get the ball, so they put two or three men on him. So I turned and I saw Johnny Edgar, who was a forward on the team, and he was open. I was at the top of the foul line and Trigger uh, wasn't able to get off a shot, so he gave it to me and I dropped one in. And we went ahead. We had been tied and I, we went ahead. Came down to the other end, Connecticut had time to get off another shot, which they did. Fortunately, they missed it and we went wild. It was our biggest win during the best season that UMass had ever had. UMass had won the battle, but UConn ultimately won the war. Even though each team ended up with only one loss in the Yankee Conference, the Huskies finished with six conference victories, while the Red Men had only five. Thus, the NCAA tournament bid went to UConn based on winning percentage. The Huskies would end up reaching the Sweet 16. Uh, it was very disappointing. We certainly uh, earned it. We beat them. Uh, we had every reason to expect that we were going to be able to go. So, yeah, we were disappointed. We went undefeated in the cage that year, and we finished with a record of 17 and 6. So I've always been delighted that up to the time that I was a senior, we had the best team in the history of basketball. Unfortunately, the success of that season would not last. The Redmen did not win more than 13 games in any season for the rest of the decade, and Coach Curran resigned in the spring of 1959. It went away, and, and Bob Curran was trying to do a good job as coach, limited resources, uh, very limited staff, and he didn't have much for a recruiting budget, he couldn't do a heck of a lot. And he finally decided he got this great offer to go and selling insurance full time. It made sense to him and he resigned as the basketball coach. Still, it was the decade of the 1950s when UMass first established itself as a program to be reckoned within the realm of New England basketball. It was a fun era to be at UMass. No a lot of stuff about the 1950s other than hearsay and to actually get some factual information was great and you see where the rivalries that are now UConn and Boston College and Holy Cross 
where those things kind of started and, and began. And to uh, see that team beat UConn in that initial game there was, was nice to watch. And, you know, I've spent some time with a lot of those guys from the 50s, and they're a great bunch of, of fellas who are, are really instrumental in kind of where this program is today. And many of them will be on hand for the game against Boston College.